Hi, uh, welcome to Steve's Wood Cave. Um, in this video we're going to talk about um, some little tips and tricks for the wood rat. Um, some of them I may have mentioned in my previous videos. Um, one which we're going to do here first is um, we'll talk about the cutter centre marker. So where is the centre of the router bit or cutter? We want to mark that onto the top face of, of the body of the rat so that we, we can make a simple jig like this, just two pieces of wood or three pieces of wood which can be put in the marker position and I'll show you how this works with the um, centre of the router bit or cutter which is then on, on there. So this will enable us to, to do actual measurements, we'll be able to move it east or west, left or right, um, by a certain amount of millimetres or inches or whatever you want to use. So how do we do that? Well basically we need um, a simple router bit like that which is a, a V profile. Um, it needs to have a, a reasonably sharp point, nothing curved. So basically a triangular profile. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do is take this board that we used in the previous videos and I've put the V-shaped router bit in, in the router now and all I'm going to do is just put any piece of, it could be any piece of wood, put it in the cutter position and then what we want to do is depth it one millimetre, so touch on the top of your end grain depth it approximately one millimetre okay and all we're going to do is just um, go straight through from front to back there we go doesn't matter where along the width you you have this but the thing is now is when once you've cut it, you don't touch the handle because you don't want to move the sliding bar. That will change everything. So that little V groove in the top of my piece of wood now can go in the marker position over here. And we can then scribe it to the top of the uh, wood rack body. Just using the square and scribe. Um, so that's that's all there is to it. Okay, so as you can see here, the um, there's the little V groove that we cut with the V shaped bit. Um, this is the marker position, and I've put it in, and you can see that my line is lining up with it. So basically, uh, in your case, because you won't have this line already there, you just find that centre point and then scribe it onto the onto the top surface using an engineer's scribe like so and that's it once you've done that that's that's you don't ever have to do it again that's now your center of any router bit that you put in the router what we need to make is this basic jig which can be made up of MDF or plywood or whatever this happens to be some scraps of timber so what you can do on here is you can scribe lines on the top of this piece of wood so what we've got here is um, a series of lines drawn on the top of this board this is the first one and that's lined up with the scribed line on the body and then we've got intervals of 23 millimeters going along here. So we now know that we can move the workpiece that's in the cut position to the next line. And as long as our eyesight is good, we can line those up and make the cut with a reasonable amount of accuracy. There may be a tiny error in that. As long as you make very fine lines on your piece of wood, not too thick, then they'll 
you'll find the centre of that line as good as you, can, as you can possibly get. So now we can basically move and use this piece of wood in the marker position and we can use this to reference exactly where we want to cut when the workpiece is in the cutter position. So as you can see this um, simple jig just needs a, a corner block or preferably just two pieces of wood but the, the main vertical piece um, can be dimensions of 200 by 90 by 20 millimeters. I mean you can change this to suit you. The top shelf is I think 200 millimeters long, 40 millimeters deep and 20 millimeters thick and the left hand edge of the shelf must be flush with the left hand edge of this vertical board. Another thing to note is that the top shelf must not be screwed in through the top surface into the vertical board so I would use dominoes or dowels or biscuits or as you can see in this case I've just used a simple spare piece of wood and screwed into the vertical board that way and into the other board through there or glued it even screwed and glued it. That means that the top surface of this small shelf is, is left free. You don't want any screws or pins or anything in the way because you're going to be writing on it with your pencil. One other thing to note is that the scribed line on the body of the rat is the centre of the router bit or cutter. So you have to allow for the natural diameter of the router bit that you're using. So you have to use a little bit of thought. So depending on what kind of cut you're doing, you need to mark out on the board accounting for the diameter of the bit that you're using. So it's just something to be wary of because you might get cut out, literally, you might cut out the wrong bit uh, or too much or too little. So you want to be really careful of that. So just by example, let's we actually do still have a 10mm diameter straight spiral bit in the router. So if I set this left hand edge of this marking jig directly on the center of the router bit, the scribe line that we made, you can see my original pencil mark is to the left by about five millimeters which is half the diameter of the router bit. So now if I were to line up this face, this left hand edge of this marker jig with my router bit center line then I know that I'm going to cut a 5mm shoulder on the workpiece that I put in the cutter position where the router is. So that's just something to be wary of and when I wind it to the next line that means that my next cut is centred on this line. So it will be 5mm either side of this marked line and for the next one and the next one and the next one. That's just something to be wary of. So although we said that the wood rat doesn't have any built-in accurate method of measuring your where to position your router bit, um, it is possible to um, create something that will measure as accurately as you can line up these two lines. Of course, um, there's always going to be some minor error, but hopefully it won't be detectable in, in the final joint that you make and it also depends what, what you're trying to make but um, I think you'll find that it will work pretty well. There are some other uh, measurement techniques I can show you so um, I mentioned it maybe in one of my other videos but this is now I've got the aluminium um, guides on here this is a much more solid guide I don't know if you can see here on the right hand side there's a, a ruler attached there's a T-slot in each of these which you can put stop blocks on as well so you can make your own stop blocks from a small piece of wood and a nut and bolt that goes through there, wing nut and bolt and then you can stop the router going north and south or backwards and forwards by however many millimetres you, you want to set it and that might be useful for, for making tenons and stuff like that um, but this ruler is just a 6 inch ruler, 150mm long, it has a hole in one end so if you've got one of these or similar to this Starrett ruler that doesn't have any holes in, um, that's not so useful. This is just a cheap Draper ruler 
and here we have a pers piece of perspex with a very very fine line cut in it and this is hot melt glued to the moving router plate that the router plate is attached to and this very very fine scribed line which is coloured in in black just rides over the top of the ruler so you can basically move it backwards and forwards as accurately as your eyesight will allow you but again if you want to you can make stop blocks that stop it from the front and the back you can put one on the, the left and one on the right and that will prevent the, the router body moving a certain distance another thing we've got here underneath is this horizontal um, this is a, a horizontal measuring device underneath the wood rat there's a, a T-slot that runs through the main body the, um, the sliding rail um, moves relative to the body obviously um, but you can just make up a piece of pine or MDF or whatever and you can cut um, this is a, a 300mm Rabone fine ruler which is really really good and what I've done is I've cut a, um, a shallow dovetail bit slot in the front face of this a couple of holes through from underneath some bolts and magnets to lock it and position it left and right wherever you want to go and this will allow you to measure accurately from east to west or left to right so I've got adjustment of the ruler within this dovetail slot the dovetail slot is um, as I say just use a I think this is half inch wide so you need a half inch route of it the bottom diameter of it and you need to go in about one millimetre but a bit of trial and error on a piece of scrap will enable you to find the right setting so it creates a, an angled recess into which this roof goes you can see it's a bit loose at the end here probably it's a bit odd now it needs replacing but it just about fits in there so what I can do is I can move this it's a piece of perspex again with a line, fine line scribed on the back face of it with a black pen finely drawn into the, the scribed line um, and then you have to drill and tap something like an M4 hole there. No, and then you can attach this perspex, set it vertically and then when you look in here I can see how many millimetres I've moved left and right. So that's another very accurate way of making measurements from east to west or left to right. So that's my two two methods, this north-south ruler and perspex marker and my east-west ruler at the bottom. So that's three methods really for um, setting it up. So he can see in close up now we have the um, piece of perspex here it's got a very very fine line M may not be able to see it very very fine line on the back face of the perspex and that's just coloured in with a very fine black pen tap drill and tap a hole for a suitable bolt and I think there's a washer behind there as well to space it away from the main because the I don't know if you can see, there's a little ridge here. So this sliding bar is set in relative to the, the face of the, or the body face. So you need to put a, a washer or two in here. So once you've done that, um, then you've got your piece of pine or MDF with your dovetailed slot for your, your ruler. You can set this to wherever you want to, set your reference line to and then I can move the workpiece however many millimetres left or right and uh, as long as my eyesight is good I should be able to line up the cuts so that's how the down under um, the down under marker 
gauge works and that again allows you to make some very very accurate positional cuts so here's the um, north-south ruler and marker so as I said before there's a T-slot in here in these aluminium guides there's a small um, bolt with a wing nut, a couple of washers and a ruler with a hole in the end, six in, uh, six inch ruler. Um, I use metric so I now, again a very fine line scribed in the back surface of this piece of perspex. The perspex can be any size really but obviously it needs to be big enough to, to span across the router plate and the aluminium guide. It's just attached to the router plate and can be removed at any time and reattached at any time um, just with a hot melt glue gun um, just square it up make sure it's going across squarely and then this fine line will just ride over the top of the ruler and allow you to to measure from the back position to the front position however many millimeters so you just reference your bit from certain part of your workpiece and then you'll know um, but obviously remember that where you're referencing from if you're referencing from the outside edge of a straight uh, router bit then you're going from the circumference of the diameter so you may need to account for half diameter movements so yeah that's that's a very simple way of improving the accuracy of your north south movements so for moving making tenons um, we can accurately make those um, and then fine tune them if necessary so thanks for watching um, this is the marker methods that I use um, we've got the, the one that we can draw lines on this L-shaped plate that goes in the marker position it uses the centre line of the router bit that we that we talk, talked about at the beginning and we cut it with the the V-shaped router bit and we've got this north-south ruler and perspex marker and we've got this down under um, east-west marker with the perspex marker here so there's three different ways that I use um, there are other ways you can use the um, digital calipers, I think you can get special ones which are for attaching to machines sort of thing that you might find on a, uh, a thicknesser or planar thicknesser jointer type equipment but I think it's overkill, you don't need that um, this is good enough, as long as your eyesight is good enough you should be fine so that's the three methods I use um, in fact mostly I use just this north south ruler and this down under ruler. Um, that's pretty much all I use for accurate positioning. Um, other than that, it's fairly straightforward for standard cuts on, on the wood wrap. So I hope you enjoyed it um, and um, hopefully I'll bring out some, some more videos shortly. Um, and if you like the video, please um, comment and I'll get back to you and also um, if you haven't clicked subscribe please subscribe that'd be great much appreciated cheers and uh, see you next time thanks